In the vast expanse of the cosmos, humanity's quest for knowledge and exploration knows no bounds. Welcome to a captivating journey into the future of communication, where data travels at the speed of light through the silent vacuum of space. This is Deep Space Optical Communications. Tried and tested radio frequency communications from Deep Space are approaching their bandwidth limit, raising the need for upgraded communication systems. Future space missions, meanwhile, are expected to transmit huge volumes of science data, including high-definition images and video, significantly increasing the bandwidth required. Much like fiber optics replacing old telephone wires on Earth as demand for data grows, going from radio communications to laser, or optical, communications will allow increased data rates throughout the solar system with 10 to 100 times the capacity of state-of-the-art radio systems currently used by spacecraft. NASA's Deep Space Optical Communications DSOC, experiment is the agency's first demonstration of optical communications beyond the Earth-Moon system. DSOC is a system that consists of a flight laser transceiver, a ground laser transmitter, and a ground laser receiver. New advanced technologies have been implemented in each of these elements. The transceiver will piggyback on NASA's Psyche spacecraft when it launches to the metal-rich asteroid of the same name. The DSOC technology demonstration will begin shortly after launch and continue as the spacecraft travels from Earth to its gravity assist flyby of Mars. DSOC operations are planned to conclude two years after launch, with extended mission opportunities to be evaluated. Key goals Demonstrate that flight laser transceiver and ground systems are able to lock onto each other's laser signals during DSOC's calibration and commissioning phase. Demonstrate specified downlink data rates as the Psyche spacecraft travels farther away from Earth. These data rates will decrease with increasing distance from Earth. Demonstrate a data uplink up to a distance of one astronomical unit, the average distance between the Earth and Sun 93 million miles, or 150 million kilometers. Demonstrate operations for two years from the Psyche mission launch, at the cadence of one to two contacts per week for the duration of the technology demonstration. DSOC Partners L3 Harris SSG Inc. of Wilmington, Massachusetts, built the optical transceiver assembly. Controlled Dynamics Inc. of Huntington Beach, California, built the isolation pointing assembly struts. Catchy of Florham Park, New Jersey, built the laser transmitter assembly. MIT Lincoln Laboratory of Lexington, Massachusetts, built the photon counting camera. Fibertech Inc. of Herndon, Virginia, built the uplink laser assembly. First Mode of Seattle, Washington, built the aperture cover. Existing ground assets include the Optical Communications Telescope Laboratory near Wrightwood, California, and the Hale Telescope at Palomar Observatory on Palomar Mountain, California. The Palomar Observatory is managed by Caltech Optical Observatories of Pasadena, California. The System Flight Hardware The DSOC Flight Laser Transceiver will feature a near-infrared laser transmitter to send high-rate data to the ground system and a sensitive photon counting camera to receive a ground-transmitted laser. The transceiver's 8.6-inch aperture telescope is mounted on an assembly of struts and actuators that stabilizes the optics from spacecraft vibrations. The flight hardware is fitted with a sunshade and protrudes from the side of the spacecraft, making it one of Psyche's easily identifiable features. Ground Systems a high-power near-infrared laser transmitter at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory's Table Mountain facility near Wrightwood, California, will uplink a modulated laser beam to the flight transceiver and demonstrate the transmission of low-rate data. The uplink laser will also act as a beacon for the flight transceiver to lock onto. The downlink data sent back by the DSOC transceiver on Psyche will be collected by the 200-inch Hale Telescope at Caltech's Palomar Observatory in San Diego County, California, using a sensitive superconducting nanowire photon counting receiver to demonstrate high-rate data transfer. History Laser communications have already passed a key test. In 2013, NASA's Lunar Laser Communications demonstration tested record-breaking uplink and downlink data rates between Earth and the Moon. In 2021, NASA's Laser Communications Relay demonstration launched to test high-bandwidth optical communications from geostationary orbit and to demonstrate relay capabilities so that spacecraft don't need to maintain a direct line of sight with Earth to communicate. In 2022, 
NASA's terabyte infrared delivery system downlink the highest ever data rate from a satellite in low Earth orbit to a ground-based receiver. When launched, DSOC will take optical communications into deep space for the first time. This will set the foundation for establishing higher data rate returns from future human and robotic missions to Mars and beyond. Program Management NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, a division of Caltech in Pasadena, California, manages the project for the Technology Demonstration Missions Program within NASA's Space Technology Mission Directorate and the Space Communications and Navigation Scan Program within the agency's Space Operations Mission Directorate end-to-end -end signaling verification testbed activity. The DSOC project maintains active testbeds for advancing system design by verifying predicted performance of components, assemblies and end-to-end -end systems. Two parallel testbeds, I pointing and tracking control and E end-to-end -end signaling have been developed. The pointing and control testbed uses a prototype aluminum FLT integrated to the IPA and the PCC. Figura shows the FLT in the testbed. In order to test pointing and tracking functions in the laboratory a gravity offload for suspending the assembly from its center of mass is used. This gravity offload is needed to test the IPA which cannot otherwise overcome gravity loading. A beacon to overfill the 22 cm aperture is generated from a laser test and evaluation station LTES, in close proximity to the FLT not shown. Overfilling the FLT entrance aperture with a collimated laser beam best emulates the incident beacon wave front on the FLT in space. The FLT can acquire and track this beacon and point a laser back that is received by sensors in the LTES. Disturbance can be applied to the base of the IPA to test the isolation and rejection of vibration. This testbed has verified approximately 1 mu rad RMS tracking errors per axis with representative injected base disturbance. Future ground system needs Ground deficiencies for infusion toward operational mission capability are stark when viewed in the post-DSOC technology demonstration time frame. A ground infrastructure for receiving deep space laser communications signals does not exist today. Using astronomy assets for operations does not offer a viable or reliable solution. Studies have indicated potential cost risk associated with implementing this capability. A robust solution for this is still forthcoming but some recent and ongoing activity at JPL to try to bridge this gap is presented. JPL has been considering RF optical hybrid apertures that involve mounting mirrored surfaces to a fraction of existing 34 meters radio frequency antennae in the NASA Deep Space Network DSN. Initial studies and proof of concept. Experiments toward this has been completed and a detailed system engineering effort to better understand the implementation technologies and capabilities is now underway. Four pods of 16 hexagonally close-packed mirrors with center separation of approximately 1.2 meters provides a collection area equivalent to approximately 8 meters diameter. The resulting optical surface is spherical and the collected light is relayed through a spherical aberration corrector sack before bringing the light to a focus beyond which it can be re-collimated and relayed to a communication detector and an acquisition camera. Actuators for beam steering and varying the field of view are also accommodated in the back-end optical train. The spherical figure of the segmented primary mirror surface can be maintained using active edge sensors that were developed at JPL for other applications. The conclusion from the brief discussion above is that the RF optical hybrid can be utilized for deep space optical communications down to 10 degree SEP angles. To first order the performance at shallower SEP angles would be representative of a 6 meters diameter aperture while at larger SEP angles, to be defined, approximately 8 meters of aperture would be available. If implemented, this does provide a path forward in terms of having relatively lower cost ground infrastructure until larger investments are made. Other future studies related to ground capability are further expanding the SNSPD detector array size that would be needed for use with the larger effective aperture diameters. Means of using some form of adaptive control to reduce the effective field of view in the presence of atmospheric turbulence would recover performance lost to additive background noise and may also allow operating without having to increase SNSPD array area. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more awe-inspiring journeys into the realms of space and exploration.